So today we're going to look at something a bit different. We are going to look at Astro Linux, which is a Russian Linux based computer operating system. And what makes this one uh, a pretty different is that it is used and certified for the Russian Defense uh, Ministry, government, etc. It does uh, use uh, the Debian package manager and it is a derivative of Debian. So we're going to take a look at it today. Uh, the latest version 2.1245. Uh, so let's uh, take a look and I'm going to spin this up in a virtual machine. One thing I'm going to specify though is for obvious reasons, I'm not going to connect this OS to the internet. Okay, as you can see here, it gives us options, language, so I've just changed it to English, and let's do the graphic installation. Okay, and as you can see, it uses the Debian installer. We're going to install it on English. We'll keep it to United States locales. Uh, we'll accept the end user agreement here. Right, we'll, we'll use an American English keyboard for international. And we'll obviously get all the install files from the CD-ROM. Yeah, of course, it's complaining that DHCP is down, which is the case, of course, with our disabled network uh, card or unplugged. So we won't configure the network. Hostname Astro is fine. Username. And a strong password. which it forces you to use a stronger password. And as you can see here, this is really made for Russia, all that part of the world. So you can even see what the time zones here. So I'll just do zero, zero. Okay, so we'll use guided, we'll use the entire disk, and we'll just use the all files on one partition. Right, the changes to the disk, and as you can see, Jesus ext4 as default. And of course, we'll be back once it's completed this uh, portion. Yeah, we will use the Linux kernel 6.1 generic. Yeah, so as you can see here, we have the option of any additional packages. So I'm just going to add the games option here. Um, interestingly, though. It does talk about fly apps for working on devices with touchscreen. So if you, I suppose, in a more retail type of environment, and of course, uh, out the box, it uses the fly desktop environment, which we'll take a look at once this is installed. Okay, so there's something else as well I should have mentioned. You do get a free version of Astro Linux, which doesn't have the additional security around it. And the pro edition, here, um, depending on what license you have, you can actually set additional uh, security levels uh, of your system. So for this, I'm just going to do base security level RAL. And here, of course, it has uh, additional settings as well. You could, we're looking at macros, con uh, logging out uh, the console, disable automatic network configurations. You could even disable the bootloader menu showing up, local time for system clock, etc. Uh, we'll also grab to the hard disk, yes. And what I find very interesting is the system asks you to set a password for grub. And you can't get around that. If you don't type in a password, it won't accept it. However, by default, uh, it loads graph normally anyway, so that would be an additional configuration you have to do on your side. To load, I had to actually disable 3D acceleration, otherwise it keeps uh, switching the virtual machine off, which is quite bizarre behavior. Anyway, we're here at uh, the login screen. You can see we have an actions option here, and we have a session option, so we're just going to log in. And uh, as you can see, the desktop environment looks a little different as this uses the proprietary fly 
desktop environment, which is uh, Qt based, but uh, only seems to be available for uh, Astro OS. So I'm first going to fix resolution. So we go can go to system, and I take it we it will have to do something with display. So oh, let's just go to control panel. Okay, screen settings. So we'll change this to 1020 by 980. We'll apply that. Okay, moving the scale back to 100%. So we can better see everything. Okay, so here we have Astro Linux. Still, of course, disconnected from the network. We're not going to give this any network connectivity. Why, you ask me? For some possibly pretty obvious reasons. You don't know what uh, this OS might be reporting on in the back end or trying to. So here, of course, uh, looking at this, uh, starting off, it has the uh, normal LibreOffice installed here. Right, so you could just click on Office LibreOffice by default, click on, for example, Writer, and that works. Although what is interesting, it does have the Astro Linux extension. And if I click on that, it gives me information in Russian, which I can't speak. Uh, if we go to Extension Manager, and we open that up, see, um, you can see a couple of these here are actually locked. You can't remove them and you can't disable them. Which is quite uh, interesting. So I'll close that. And I see one of them is specifically a template. So if I go to manage templates, I don't know if the, where it's gotten uh, some others from. But anyway, that's uh, LibreOffice. Right. Next, uh, they've got Golden Dict, which is a dictionary tool. And of course, Kate, uh, the text editor. Uh, networking side, well, they have quite an interesting selection going on here because they have normal Firefox, right? Firefox, here we go, 11.18. No additional extensions here, but what I could see, uh, just normal, normal Firefox. But when you continue exploring, I see they have Chromium web browser. Right, but they also have Chromium Ghost, which I am not too sure if they're supposed to be different, so if it's the same thing, or if it's just um, obviously, you know, Astro Linux's compiled version of Chromium. Uh, they have a firewall configuration configurator. Right, which of course just uses uh, easy firewall. Uh, then there's something here called PSI Plus. And I have no clue what this is. I assume it's the uh, a local Russian communication chat type thing, but uh, it's not configured and I'm obviously not going to set it up and I'm not going to configure this. But uh, very interesting. And then, of course, Thunderbird Mail. Uh, nothing really to write home about in that. From a graphics side uh, of you, you know, pretty much the normal stuff. Blender, uh, GIMP, Gwenview, Inkscape, Color Paint. Uh, which, uh, a Color Paint does look awfully like uh, old Windows Paint which is just fun. Uh, carrying on the graphics, anything different here really was the scan dialog. So they have their own specific scan dialog for uh, if you're scanning something. Uh, and of course, spectacle to take the screenshots with. Multimedia side, uh, just something that says video camera. Right, uh, this view thing where there's no nothing showing. 
Uh, this does make use of pass audio, as you can see here. And they have good old uh, VLC pre-installed. Uh, from an education standpoint, just KCalc is installed. Games, uh, just Jack, MS, Colorless, Patience. And accessory side, they have a Fly Admin ISO, which if you open that up, is basically, a, uh, it's an ISO imaging writing tool. So pop the ISO image in and write it most likely to a uh, removable storage such as a USB flash drive. They have Arc, Midnight, Command installed, um, a certificate of management of keys, um, and if of course if you were to go here it doesn't show you any of the installed keys. Okay, so that's really your uh, whole fly portion of it all, of the system. Uh, then, of course, uh, Fly Manager, which we've briefly looked at, which is uh, looks awfully like Windows Explorer. I mean, let's be pretty honest about this. Uh, but, you know, it's just a like any other desktop environment. Uh, if you right-click here, wow, that uh, looks really familiar. You can go create a new folder. You can create a new text file. You know, the usual type of stuff. Double click and it will open it up. Uh, under settings, there are options, thumbnail views, archives that are supports out of the box. And if you right click and go to properties, it'll show you a properties bar that looks awfully like uh, Windows. And you can show hidden files, you can show hidden folders, you can ignore them. You can have places instead of a tree, you know, all part of uh, this uh, file manager. Pretty nifty actually. Uh, then continuing here, we have Good old Synaptic Package Manager. And you will see here that if I was to go to the repos, make it bigger, uh, these are the repos the system would use by default, would use to update itself. So as you can see, definitely all uh, using its own repos. Carrying on with it, uh, additional tools like Fly Admin Time. So if you want to choose which uh, service to synchronize your clock, system clock with. A audit configuration here. So if you wanted to, you could configure the system to audit uh, specific files. So let's say on the desktop, Right, you could watch a specific file, or let's say under the gosh folder, uh, you could you could do that. So I could say the desktop, new text file, right, and I say OK, and I say OK here, it tells you it's watching one file, and I open up this file, Save it, um, and I just to refresh here. It could probably start uh, telling me and saving the type of things I've been doing, which is uh, yeah, frightening. But I'm impressed. It's actually all available for everyone to see. Um, interestingly, of course, case discard. which essentially shows us that we're only using 650 megs of memory, hardly any memory. We're using very little CPU. Printers tools, QBAT, uh, system report center. So you could generate a report. You know, it's quite a, 
quite a bunch of uh, specific proprietary tools uh, going on here that they've got. And of course, uh, the you can just start searching. So you could just look for Firefox and it pretty much would find it. If I can spell. Uh, what's also interesting, if you go to exit, it also gives you a whole schedule. So you can actually go and schedule uh, how long after you want the machine to shut down or do all that out of the box. Right clicking on the desktop here brings you to refreshing icons, ordering the icons, a context menu to create. Uh, clicking here, oh, it takes you to monitor. Nice. Uh, right clicking here and you go to properties, will then take you to just a bit of a theme editor. So, out of interest, uh, the is no additional wallpapers and you could change the theme around if you wanted to so for example you can go from fly default blue to let's say dark blue deb and let's just do breeze dark instead and now we have a dark thing going on okay so some basic customization tools Right, but of course, this desktop environment, the Fly desktop environment is proprietary Qt based. So it's not like you can go install it on something else. And basically earlier, we just briefly looked at the file manager or control center, should I say rather. And you can see here options like Windows properties. Uh, if you wanted no minimize button, some, some weird things, which I assume you would have to restart for etc hardware hot plug actions cpu frequency tool miscellaneous networking security and users uh, and of course you can really lock this down and you do it like that so who is this for well specifically this uh, distribution from what i read gets used in uh russia uh you normal users can use it but just specifically now they're also using it in the military hence the additional lockdown parameters and the additional auditing and all that stuff that's associated with this um to be honest with you i really actually like the flight desktop environment like you know you can definitely see that when using K kt tool and They've tried to make it look like Windows, or it looks very similar to like the whole Windows 7 type thing going on there, which I suppose if you're trying to move people other makes sense. And uh, yeah, it's pretty speedy, pretty, you know, decent, I guess. But uh, would I use this? Hell no. There's no way. Uh, you don't know what this thing is doing. You don't know what it might be reporting in the background. You don't know what else is in there. And you really think I'm going to use something that's meant for another country's military? No, there's no way. It has definitely been fun to look and It's interesting to see how some other countries are using Linux. But uh, as for everyday usage, nah. I'd rather stick with the normal, regular Linux distro. Folks. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think. As always, bye for now. Mm -hmm.